Is it possible to actually buy a rental property with no cash and no credit? Yes, it absolutely is. My name is Monica Mann. I'm a serial entrepreneur and millionaire real estate investor. And I'm here to share with you a very simple yet little known strategy and how you can actually acquire a no cash, no credit piece of real estate. Now, it doesn't even matter whether you want to use it for a rental property. You can actually use it for your own property, meaning you can move in yourself with the strategy I'm about to share with you. So just to give you a little backstory, I started with real estate investing back in 1995. It was with a HUD foreclosure and it was a little small townhouse and I never turned back ever since. In 2001, I learned the art of real estate investing with what we call commercial apartment building or residential commercial cash flowing properties. And a little bit after that, around 2003, 2004, I learned the art of investing in commercial real estate, meaning with office buildings, industrial warehouses, that kind of thing altogether. So I've been in the realm of real estate investing for a very long time. And when my credit got trashed in 2003, I had to file for personal bankruptcy due to the fact that I had an identity theft situation with my first husband. I had to really learn how to think outside of the box when it came to continuing with investing in real estate. And so what I learned was how to do something called lease options or rent to own property deals. Now, things have changed since. So if you think I'm gonna be talking about rent to own or lease options, I'm not going to be because I think that that is an outdated strategy. It doesn't work nearly as well as it used to back in the day. And there's a new, much more cutting edge strategy, which I'm going to be sharing with you shortly. So first of all, let's talk about real estate investing as a whole. Now, if you don't really understand what the most type, profitable types of real estate investing is right now, I've done other videos about that, so you might want to check those out. But basically, it's not traditional rentals anymore. You don't want to be buying a house to then turn around and try to rent it to a single family, um, maybe a you know, set of individuals, of, you know, a family of four, for example. There's just no money in that. So, for example, if you buy, say, a $400,000 property, chances are you're going to be paying around $2,500 a month for the mortgage. That does not include your property taxes and insurance. So by the time you're done with all of your expenses for that property every single month, you would be lucky to break even if you're not making maybe $100 or $200 a month in profits in your pocket. And the problem with this is that if any little thing breaks on the property, say for example, you need to replace the HVAC system or the boiler or you need to put money into plumbing or electrical, that's going to set you back for months, if not years, to be able to make up for that those repairs. And even worse, especially with the economy slipping into the dump right now, some people lose their jobs and they're not able to pay you anymore at all. So then you now have to come out of pocket for your mortgage, your interest, or, or rather your insurance, and you have to also come out of pocket for your taxes. And on top of that, come out of pocket for a lawyer to hire to get the people out of your property. And that's just not a really conducive way of making money in real estate. So first understand what your strategy is when it comes to investing in real estate. Because if you don't understand what your strategy is, then you're gonna kind of be flying blind and you might be getting involved in this business without fully understanding how to profit. So again, I've done a lot of other videos about how to make what we call 10X or 10 times on your real estate investments. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to get those investments without a dime of your own money and without your own credit. So if your credit is in the toilet right now and you're trying to fix it, I've done a lot of videos about credit, so you should be fixing your credit and rebuilding your credit right now if it is in the toilet, but we could still do this strategy even if you don't want to use your own credit or you don't have any money to start. So what is the secret strategy? Well, first of all, let's talk about the housing market as a whole in most areas of the country, not all areas, but most areas of the country, and it is starting to slip. The markets are softening in most major metropolitan areas of the country. So this means it's good news for you because you can get deals on property. So for example, take this $400,000 house, they've done price cuts on it, still been sitting on the market, and the good news is you can come in and offer them you know, a good deal on their property. Now here's what you can do. So the good news is a lot of people that have been looking at their listings sitting on the market for say, you know, three, four, five months plus, 
they're starting to lose faith that they're going to ever sell their property. Some of them are doing some major price cuts, not just a few thousand dollars here and there, but we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. And in some cases for really high end properties, hundreds of thousands of dollars in price cuts, still not selling their properties and kind of getting that sense of desperation because they probably bought at peak of the market. They're willing to take a little bit of loss, maybe a loss in their equity that they would have had in their 20% down payment but they just want to get out from underneath the burden, the financial burden of the property. So this is where my strategy comes in. It's called subject to. So subject to or sub to for short, basically means that you're essentially taking over the property owner's mortgage. You're also taking over their insurance and their tax obligations as well. So you're essentially just slipping in. It's almost as if they went into a coma and they are no longer able to handle their property situation and you just kind of slip in and you start to pay their mortgage on their behalf so you literally will gain control over their their entire their entire circumstance their entire situation when it comes to the property including getting their username and password to be able to log into their mortgage portal to be able to make their mortgage payments as well as if they pay their taxes the property taxes separately as well as paying for the insurance as well now all of these things will stay in place so the mortgage company will not change, you will not be refinancing, you will not be buying it from them, you will keep it in place. The reason you want to do this is because chances are these people got a much better interest rate within which you can get today. Furthermore, even if they got their property, say, you know, a couple years ago and they didn't get that much of a break on their interest rate, you still don't want to start over with the amortization schedule that banks will charge. So if you don't know anything about the amortization schedule, it basically means on a 30-year or 15-year fixed mortgage, you're going to be paying a lot more in interest those first handful of years. And as the years roll on, even though the mortgage payment stays the same, every single month you're going to be paying more on principal as you go on and less in interest. So it's very interest heavy on your payments in the very beginning of your tenure of your 15 or, or 30 year mortgage um, period. So if somebody's been paying on their mortgage for even two, three, four, five years, they're getting past the very heavy interest period of their mortgage and starting to chisel deeper into the principal with every passing month. So you want to be able to use that tenure, that period of time that they've already established with the mortgage company and not have to start over from scratch. And when you do refinance or finance the property in your name, you're literally starting over from scratch. Not to mention the fact that the interest rates are much higher today so even if they purchased a property a couple years ago or longer, they've still gotten a better interest rate. And even better if they they bought the house maybe five years ago and their interest rate was much lower than it is today, you're essentially going to be taking that new um, mortgage over but getting the old interest rate. So that's why you want to keep it in that person's name instead of ever refinancing or transferring it into your own name because you don't want to start over with a different much higher interest rate and start over on the amortization schedule for the mortgage company because then you got to start all over again with paying the vast majority of your first couple of years three four five years that are going to be very very heavy on the interest and not your principal payments okay so how do you do this legally well, it, it all comes down to having the right contract in place, the right agreement in place, the right legal paperwork in place. This is why I always recommend that people have a real estate attorney in the state in which the transaction is occurring to do all of this paperwork, make sure everything is, all the, all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed, you have notarized documents, whatever the attorney recommends, you basically make sure all the paperwork is set in stone, and you want to make sure that they, you know, that you get to take everything over. And once the mortgage is paid, that property is yours, it's not theirs. They have no legal dibs on the property at all. And as long as your paperwork is just set up correctly, this is 100% legal. Now you're probably wondering, what if the bank calls the loan? They could very well call the loan. And chances that the banks are going to be doing this, especially in this day and age where foreclosures are now on the rise, the chances that they're going to call the loan on a property 
that somebody's been paying the mortgage on is pretty close to 0%. I mean, you're talking about the 1% or less possibility that this is going to happen. And that's only if they ever find out that you've essentially taken over the loan. As far as they're concerned, somebody else is logging into this person's mortgage system, this mortgage portal. They've attached a different bank account to be able to draw the monthly payments out of, which would be your business bank account ideally. And that's all they know that they all they know is that they're getting their monthly mortgage payment and that's all they care about and as these foreclosures get more and more larger in size in every major metro city across the country because of people having paid way too much money for their houses they can't afford it these properties going into kind of like a 2008-2009-esque foreclosure mode that you're going to start to see if you haven't seen it already these lenders and banks have they have no interest in doing a frivolous foreclosure on somebody who is going to be paying somebody else's mortgage as long as the payments are made on time so I would not worry about the due on sale clause which is what it's called if a bank calls the mortgage if they feel that somebody else is taking over the payments and they're not they don't have any authority to do that very, very few times have I even heard of this type of situation happening. So you have less than a 1% chance that the due on sale clause will be triggered in, in the event that you take over. So please don't worry about that part. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Monica, this all sounds great, but the couple things I'm worried about, like how do I negotiate such a thing? And like what happens if they have equity? So let's just take a, a scenario here. Say, say for example, the property seller wanted $500,000 for their property and they're not able to sell it. It's been sitting on the market for six months and they they cut it to 450 So they they're now looking for somebody who could buy the property for 450 and they have equity of Say 50,000 at that point. So at the $500,000 level, they would have had a hundred thousand in equity at the 450 level They only have 50,000 in equity because maybe the house appraises at 400 So what do you do in a situation like that? You can do one of two things one you can make them the offer that they absolutely cannot refuse, and that is you can say, listen, I'm willing to give you the original 500000 that you wanted. I will take over your $400,000 loan that you have left on the property, and I will do a private mortgage contract for the remaining balance of the 100000 You can make sure that you get that $100,000, but it's going to be spread over the period of, say, 10 years at 2% interest. I mean, you can negotiate whatever interest rate. It could be a 0% interest to make sure that they get their hundred thousand dollars I mean that is literally the offer that they can't refuse they would be a fool to turn their back on such an offer especially since they're not getting anybody else who's interested in their property deal right so here you come along they just slashed the price of their property from five hundred thousand to four fifty and you're willing to give them the five hundred thousand it's just that the uh, the hundred thousand in equity is going to be a payment plan so you're essentially going to be making two payments first the initial mortgage payment which ideally it'll be like a three four percent interest five percent interest max if that's the case, then that's golden. You definitely want to do a deal like that. And then maybe a 0% interest on the second loan, which would be the 100000 spread over, say, 10 years. Okay, And then that helps them with the capital gains as well because they wouldn't have sold the property or gotten a big lump sum and they could just kind of spread it over 10 years and not have to pay that capital gains in the proceeds of getting of selling the property like they typically would do. So that is the ideal situation. Now, option B would be to offer them the 450 and then they would get the 50,000 in equity and maybe you could do a payment plan over the course of say 5 years instead of 10, 0% or maybe 5% interest depending on what you negotiate. All of this is negotiable on the private mortgage contract and then you can offer them that and essentially you tell them, listen, I'm taking over your payments. You don't have to worry about anything else. I will take care of you. you they have to keep their current insurance policy in place. You take over the insurance. They have to keep, obviously, the same tax and all of that structure. Many times the mortgage will also have the taxes and what is in the insurance as well. If not, if they're all separate, make sure that you are making payments on all of those, all three of those, which is the mortgage, the property taxes, and the property insurance, if it's not all balled into one. And then the, the other thing, too, is that they're going to be like, okay, well, I want to buy another property. Well, they can still buy another property because as long as it shows that somebody else is paying their mortgage, whether you do a lease and show on paper that you've taken over the obligation, the financial obligation, or they just simply have to show that they're not making the payments anymore and that they have a a contract with you like a private contract you want it to be a different looking contract you want it to essentially kind of like look like a lease and then that way they could show this lease to the new bank so then that way they can get funding for their new house as long as they're showing that they're not making the payments on that house and somebody else is under contract 
ideally in a lease agreement situation, so you're going to have to come up with a lease for them, basically, or they're going to have to come up with a lease for you. And you, they just basically show their new bank this lease agreement and showing proof that you're making the payments, then they can buy another property. That's not going to be a big deal. So as long as they're able to show the new lender this information that somebody else is making those payments, they can go ahead and buy a new house. So if that's one of the objections with your potential sellers, if they're like, hey, I want to buy a new house, how's this going to be? Just simply say, as long as we can show that we are making those payments and we have an agreement in place, then you're not going to have any problem buying a new property for yourself okay so that's essentially how it works it's called subject to or sub to for short if you want to know more information about how to make 10 times more on all of your real estate investing in a very little known strategy that very few real estate investors let alone anybody else knows about including how to use the subject to secret go in the description box below and consider signing up for my two-day training and this will show you everything that you need to know when it comes to the most profitable and powerful method of real estate investing. I've been in the real estate investing world since 1985. I can tell you I've seen everything you could possibly think of and this is by far the most profitable real estate investing strategy, especially today when everything's still overpriced, interest rates are ridiculous. It's literally the only way you can make money in cash flow real estate. So go ahead and check that out in the box below. And if you like this video, give me a quick thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. And this is Monica Main signing off. I will see you in the next video.